إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له الحمد لله الذي بدينه أعز وكفانا ممن استهزأ واستفز الحمد لله ما دامت السماوات والأرض ومن بعد أن تزول إن ربك فعال لما يريد وبعد فأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله كتب على نفسه البقاء وكتب على خلقه الفناء وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين وبعد فأحييكم بتحية الإسلام فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته يقول صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما بعثت لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام says to you and to me he explicitly mentions his mission to us all because there is no value to understanding the branches of knowledge if you cannot understand the underlying mission when you become very well immersed in the branches of knowledge and you don't know the mission you may lose sight of the mission you may lose sight of the reason why this is so you will know so many jurisprudential sayings, you will know so many words, so many nice fancy words, but then when it comes to the spiritual application of those words, you will find yourself lost because you have just talked and talked and talked and you did not know about the mission. So the Prophet ﷺ, knowing that the mission may be lost, knowing that people will be immersed in many different realms of knowledge, at the end of it all, the Prophet ﷺ says that the point of everything, all your knowledge stems from Rasulullah ﷺ. That has to do with this deen. Is that not the case? You will tell me Allah. Well, Allah Taala chose the Prophet ﷺ as the Prophet. How do we know Allah? Through the Qur'an. Who was the Qur'an revealed to? Muhammad ﷺ. So through Muhammad ﷺ, we know the Qur'an. That's why we know the, the Sahaba, they used to not see the difference between Qur'an and Rasulullah It is one entity. The Qur'an was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ar-Rahman allam al-Qur'an. Muhammad sallallahu is not explicitly mentioned, but he is the mercy there in that ayah. Anyways, the Prophet sallallahu knowing that all the knowledge is coming from him, he wants to remind you that the journey here, the mission here is not a mission of knowledge for hasm. It is not simply tariqan ilmiyan for hasm. It is not simply a knowledge oriented journey. He tells you, indeed, I have been sent li utammima makarim al akhlaq. Indeed, I have been sent to not to correct, to perfect, to perfect the best of character. Subhanallah. إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ Allahu Akbar. Indeed, I have been sent. So here are manners, and here are the best of manners. I am Muhammad Sallallahu and I am perfecting the best of manners. Meaning the best of manners that were existent still needed work. And Muhammad Sallallahu was the example of perfecting those manners. Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu is making it very clear what his kingdom is. The kingdom of Rasulullah Sallallahu is the kingdom of akhlaq. The kingdom of character, the kingdom of manners. That is Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. When Rasulullah sallam asked to marry the daughter of Abu Sufyan, who at the time was not a Muslim, he was not even Muslim. Kuffar Quraysh, 
they approached Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu again at the time he was not Muslim they approached him and told him oh he is he is intending on proposing to your daughter or marrying your daughter and Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu although again at the time he was not Muslim he said she should definitely marry him because she will not find better than him as a husband subhanallah and he was a kafir this is at a time where he was out to get the neck of Rasulullah yet when it came to acknowledging the Prophet Rasulullah's character it was acknowledged even by his enemies subhanallah the kingdom of Rasulullah is a kingdom of manners, a kingdom of character. What is the value of the knowledge, subhanAllah, if there is no application of it? If there was any honor to knowledge without the application of knowledge, then the most honorable being would have been Iblis. Iblis had so much knowledge. Iblis saw Allah. However, because of the lack of application and many other things, he is so dishonored and detested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he complimented Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, what did he compliment him for? He said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Is there anybody that has more ilm than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Is there anybody that has more fiqh than the Prophet Sallallahu No, the answer is no. Right? But did Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala say wa innaka la'ala ilmin azim? Did he say wa innaka la'ala fiqhin azim? What did he say? No. Indeed he said wa innaka la'ala khuluqin azim. Indeed you are on the best of manners, the greatest of manners. Subhanallah, you are on it. Allah didn't say, Anta sahib khuluqin azim. He didn't say, You have good manners. He said, Wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. Here is khuluqin azim, it is a platform, and you are on top of that. Meaning, khuluqin azim does not suffice in the description of Rasulullah in terms of his character. Subhanallah. And that is our example. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me. يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ So our following for the Prophet ﷺ is following of khuluq. Is following of khuluq. Not just knowledge. Because if that were the case, then ilm and fiqh would have been fardain. Every single person, it would be obligatory on every single person to have fiqh. However, as you all know, fiqh is fard kifaya. A group of people must go to seek knowledge in terms of fiqh, right? Does everybody need to be a faqih? No. But does everybody have to have khuluq? Yes. Everyone must have khuluq. And that is something anybody can follow. That's why the precedence that the Prophet ﷺ set for us is a precedence of khuluq. So in our following, we follow his khuluq. And that is the highest priority. If the knowledge comes, then so be it. But at the end of the day, the real, real value shows only in the khuluq. They say that the source of all akhlaq is one thing. The source of all akhlaq is the concept of tawadu. Is this concept of humbleness. The Muslim does not hold any, not even one atom's weight worth of arrogance in their heart. As the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يدخل الجنة من قال من كان في في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر وفي رواية مثقال حبة من كبر. Nobody with even an, an atom's weight worth of arrogance will enter Jannah. Or a mustard seed, they will not enter Jannah. And it is interesting what this really means. They will not enter Jannah. Because you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and focus with me please, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the creator of time and place. So His words are not subject to time and place. Subhanallah. So in the Quran, and again please remain focused with me, in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example says, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَنَهَرٍ Indeed, those whom fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are in Jannah, wa Nahar. They are in Jannah. Now, 
Subhanallah. He did not say, if you know Arabic, you will know. What is the tense of this sentence? It is not in future. He did not say, Sayakunu fi jannatin wa nahar. He did not say, Kanu. He said, Inna al muttaqina fi jannatin wa nahar. Ay fi halatin mudari'. It is in present tense. Now, the, those who are pious are in Jannah now. Alive or dead, you are in Jannah if you are of the pious. Now, subhanallah. That is why you will find that there will be people whom they will be surrounded by so many chaotic circumstances. But because they are believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are in Jannah now. So they remain with that poise and that calmness. Like the example of Rasulullah in Ta'if with rocks pelted at him, being cursed at Subhanallah. And he remains in his calm poise, right? Subhanallah. And even the angels ask, let us destroy them. No, 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 no. Do, do, do not destroy them. Maybe it will be that there will be people who will come from them, a generation to come from them that will see the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will not associate partners. He was thinking straight, stayed in that calm mood. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because in al muttaqina fi jannatin wa nahar. They are in that heaven now. Whereas in al mujrimina fi dalalin wa su'ur. As for those who are corrupt and the criminals, because wallahi they committed the greatest crime against themselves by associating partners with Allah, by, 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 by showing arrogance, by sinning, by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if they look like the happiest people on earth, they are in Jahannam now. You are your goal, as a philosopher once said. You are, innama anta hadafuk. You are simply your goal. You are simply your destination. And if the destination is Jannah, then you are acting in accordance to Jannah. It doesn't matter if you're poor, if you're rich, if you're sick, if you're healthy, you are acting in accordance to Jannah. And if you are the richest person in the world, or whatever your circumstance is, and you are not in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, then you are in Jahannam now. And you feel that shaking, that, that vexation within you, subhanAllah. What is the point of this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was speaking to shaitan, what was the sin that made shaitan be kicked out of Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded shaitan to prostrate to Adam, and you all know the story. But in Surah Al-Hijr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something very beautiful. And in the other times, maybe it doesn't hit us as much, but in this specific statement, subhanAllah, it tells us something very special. The reason why was because he was arrogant, right? Shaitan, and this was something not new. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what resided within the heart of shaitan. And as we have mentioned before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply wanted to externalize the internal. Shaitan had a nickname. He was called Tawus al Malaika, the peacock of the angels. The peacock doesn't mean the most beautiful, as some people misconstrue it. No. The peacock of the angels, meaning he would walk around and strut. I worship Allah and I have the choice to do otherwise and you angels have no choice, I am better than you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to reveal this arrogance. So he created another creation with free will to say, see, look, here is another one. And now shaitan, since you have the choice to worship me, why don't you worship me now? I am making it part of your worship to make sujood to Adam. And the angels, abided by that, whereas shaitan did not. And Allah externalized the arrogance that resided within the heart of shaitan. Shaitan did not prostrate. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he asks them, well, asks him, why did you do that, O oh, shaitan? And he gives his, his, his invalid argument that because I am created from fire and he is from clay and fire is better than clay, which also doesn't even make sense. Okay, subhanallah, I am better than him, I should not be making sujood to him, it should be the other way around. Subhanallah, a lack of khuluq, again, same concept. And shaitan does that, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ Subhanallah. He says, it cannot be that you remain arrogant when you are in Jannah. 
So exit, leave. Innaka min as-sagirin. Indeed, you are from those who are small. You are so small. La ilaha illallah. What is the secret here? Ma yakunu laka an tatakabbara fiha. Originally, brothers and sisters, when we tie our hearts to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with taqwa, originally we are in Jannah. But as soon as that Adam's weight of arrogance enters the heart, Allah says, Ma yakunu laka an tatakabbara fiha. Fakhruj minha. As soon as that arrogance comes into your heart, then Allah says the same thing to us. It is, it cannot be, it is contradictory, it is a paradox. That does not match with that. Arrogance does not match with Jannah. So you have arrogance, shaitan, exit. Get out. Leave. Because truly you are from as sagirin If you have it in you to, to, تتكبر, to become arrogant, then truly you are small. Subhanallah, Allah says to shaitan, مَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا If you have taqwa, do not extinguish the light of taqwa by the arrogance that may enter our wicked nafs sometimes. Extinguish that arrogance and that will keep you in Jannah. And if you do not, wallahi, we are kicking ourselves out. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَيَفَوْزَ الْمُسْتَغْفِرِينَ Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Hal ata ala al-insani hinun min ad-dahri lam yakun shay'an madhkura? Did it not cross the mind of the son of Adam? Did it not cross the mind of the human being that at one point they were nothing? They were nothing? One time a man came to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, he saw him doing something wrong, so he advised him. He simply gave him a piece of advice. He did not say it in front of people. He did not say anything wrong. He did not embarrass him. He simply advised him. He said, do so and so. I advise you with so and so. And then the man, he became very offended. Apparently he did not know who Ali ibn Abi Talib was or maybe he, even he did. But he said to him, أَتَعْرِفُ مَنْ أَنَا? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? So Ali ibn Abi Talib عنه, he responded, Naam, a'rifuk, even though he did not know him. He did not know him. But he said to him, Naam, a'rifuk. A'rifu anna awwaluka nutfatun madhira, wa akhiruka jifatun qadira, wa ma baynahuma tahmilu al-adira. Yes, I know you. I know you very well. I know that your beginning is a clot of semen, and I know that your end is a smelly coffin, and I know that in between them is a body that carries excretion. That's what you are. Why are you arrogant? SubhanAllah. Even the Sahaba one day, they were sitting down. And this is truly the reality of every single human being. It is not, this is not going overboard. Brother, sister, this is our reality. We begin as that, we end as that, and in between we're just that. It's as simple as that, SubhanAllah. Any extraneous arrogance that comes is all superficial and means absolutely nothing. When it comes to receiving the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should all be very humbled. La ilaha illallah. Even the Sahaba one day, they were sitting down, they were exchanging information about their family tree. They were saying, Ana ibn Fulan ibn Fulan, I am the son of this person and that person. I am the son of this man. And they were all from Quraysh. Explaining, yes, I, my father is this man, showing pride in that. And then Salman al Farisi was present. And when it came his turn, a few of the Sahaba felt bad. Oh, he, he doesn't have a, he's not from Quraysh, right? They're all from Quraysh. Salman al Farisi is what? Persian. He is from Bilad al Faris, right? SubhanAllah. So he has no father that, that, that he can refer to that they will know. SubhanAllah. So he wanted to bring things back, but he was not offended, he was not hurt. He did not feel scared. He wanted to bring things back to the true value. So when everybody was saying, Anabn Fulan, Anabn Fulan, I am the son of this person and that person, Salman al Farisi said, Anabn man sajadat lahu al malaika. I am the son of the one whom the angels prostrated to. This stuff doesn't mean anything. SubhanAllah. I am simply the son. This is where true pride comes from. SubhanAllah. From anything that connects me to a prophet or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Truly arrogance stems from insecurity, whereas humbleness stems from confidence. You see, when someone is arrogant, they have to reassure their presence and put their nose up in the air and walk around and say, give me respect. They have to demand respect because they are insecure about their true credentials, subhanAllah. Even though that should not be the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives everybody what they need to survive socially, financially, everything, subhanAllah. But when there is insecurity, the nafs tends to go overboard so that those insecurities do not show. Whereas the person who is humble is confident. They say, Malian min nafsu in overseas. They say, he is full of himself, not in a bad way. But he is shab'an min nafsu. He is full from his own self. So he needs not to go overboard in explaining, I am great, I, this tall I that needs to be broken. SubhanAllah. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, he used to say, مَا جَادَلْتُ عَالِمًا إِلَّا وَغَلَبْتَهُ وَمَا جَادَلْتُ جَاهِلًا إِلَّا غَلَبَنِي SubhanAllah. I never ever debated a scholar except that I beat him. I would always win. He is not saying that with pride. He is just saying, I never lost a debate when it came to a scholarly person. وَمَا جَادَلْتُ جَاهِلًا إِلَّا غَلَبَنِي But whenever I debate with an ignorant person, I always lose. Why? Because the ignorant person will be arrogant and will say, No, I am right. And they will remain stubborn no matter what. Whereas the true scholar, even if they are wrong, they are willing to say, I am wrong. Because that does not affect them. Subhanallah. We, we, we tend to think that if... I am to be humble, if I am to be humble, then that means I will sacrifice something for myself. When it is actually the other way around completely. When you are humble, you are not sacrificing anything. Which is proved by the promise of Rasulullah when he said, مَن تَوَضَعَ لِلَّهِ رَفَعُهُ Whomsoever is humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will definitely raise him. You will not lose anything. In fact, it is the opposite. When you are arrogant, you will lose everything. And when you are humble, you will only gain everything. And wallahi, you should try this for yourself. Every single time in your life where you were humble, you will see that Allah gave you more. Somebody made fun of you. Somebody said, you don't know how to read. Wallahi, even in my own self. I remember when I was a young boy, wallahi, I could not tell the difference between qaf and kha. I could not read Quran at all. Subhanallah, and kids used to make fun of me for this. Wallahi. But subhanallah, I never tried to be arrogant, and I, I'm not saying this just to brag, wallahi, but it is just because it is an experience that wallahi, I'll never forget. And when I trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although I was made fun of by kids who used to read very well, subhanallah, later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me so much. Walhamdulillah. Man tawada'a lillahi rafa'ahu It is a clear, clear promise from the Prophet And those who are arrogant over they have, Wallahi, they will be engulfed by that which they have. Inna qaruna kana min qawmi Musa fabagha alayhim wa ataynahu min al-kunuzi ma inna mafatihahu latanu'u bil-usbati ulil quwa Ith qala lahu qawmuhu la tafrah inna allaha la yuhibbu al-farihin Indeed, Qarun was from the tribe of Musa. He was very corrupt over them. And we gave him from the treasures so much so that the keys to his treasures needed men of strength to carry simply the keys. Men of strength needed to just carry the keys of his treasures. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ Do not get too proud of what you have. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those who become too proud. وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهَ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ Whatever Allah gave you, use that for akhirah. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And do not forget your portion in dunya. وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ And be good as Allah was good to you. Allah gave this to you. At the end of the day, Allah gave it to me and to you. Allahu Akbar. And then what was Qarun's response? إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي What are you talking about? I'm a very smart guy. Subhanallah. He could not give credit to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, 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 no. I am a very smart guy. This became only, this, this occurred only as a result of my knowledge, me. Subhanallah. 
Again, wants to assure himself, he is insecure. SubhanAllah, he is insecure to attribute the goodness to Allah. How arrogant can you be? He did not, he wanted it all to be for me. I don't want people to say that it was from Allah. I don't want people to say that. I want them to see only me. SubhanAllah. And what was the result of that? فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ Very symbolic. So we allowed the property that he owned to engulf him. He was engulfed by his own property. He was swallowed by his own dominion. Subhanallah. And this is the case. Wallahi, if you have something, be humble about it. You will keep it. If you are arrogant about it, it will eat you alive. Wallahi, this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the reason why it is so self-denigrating and so self-debilitating to attribute success to yourself. Yes, that's what Islam says. Islam says, do not attribute success to yourself, ever. Whatever good comes to you is from Allah. SubhanAllah. Any success that comes to you, you attribute it to Allah. Why? Because one day, it is from the nature of this life that you will lose. You will gain and you will lose. If, you, if the whole time that you were gaining, look, pay attention. If the whole time that you were gaining, you were pointing the finger in this direction, me, me, me. When you lose, you will do the same thing. You will point in your direction and you will say, I did this. I hate myself. Yes, suicidal thoughts when you lose. Why? Because the whole time you are pointing the finger to me. So then, and that's, the, that's what you're programmed to do. You are programmed to point the finger to myself, to me. And then when Allah took away as a test for you, where the typical mu'min would be able to say, Alhamdulillah, ala al khayri wa sham, no problem. It is from Allah. But because the whole time you programmed yourself to say me, 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 when you lose, you will also say me. This is me. I hate myself. And those who are very weak will entertain things like suicide. And those who don't like to say that, they will point in other directions. Your fault, your fault. I hate you. The father will point in the direction of the son. The son will point in the direction of the father. All because the whole time you were pointing to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we were always pointing to Allah, either in asabatu sarra ashakar, when Allah gives, Allah, I am so indebted to you. Allah, I am so grateful to you. That is the mu'min. And when he loses, in asabatu darra asabar, fakana khayran lah. And when he is hit with a hardship, sabar. He is patient. Oh Allah, I am used to all goodness from you. If you give me, then I am happy with whatever it is that you give me. Tawada' takun kan najmi la hali nazirin ala safahat il ma'i wa huwa rafi'u wa la takun kad dukhani ya'lu bi nafsihi ala tabakat il jawi wa huwa wadi'u. If you are humble, you will be like a star. If someone were to look at the water, he would see the reflection of the star. It will look low. But in reality, it is truly so high. Subhanallah, so lofty. Do not be like the smoke. يَعْلُوا بِنَفْسِهِ عَلَى طَبَقَاتِ الْجَوِّ وَهُوَ وَضِيعُ Don't be like the smoke that raises itself on its own, when in reality, it is a lowly phenomena. It is not even that lofty. All scholars, subhanAllah, it is said about them, from al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, to Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, to Imam al-Nawawi, they swore that wallahi there were scholars in the time of Abu Hanifa that had more knowledge than Abu Hanifa. But Allah chose to raise Abu Hanifa because of this secret, tawadah. Do you think Imam al-Nawawi was the only one to write 40 hadith? No, he was not. So many people wrote, but Allah chose to raise Imam al nawawi because of his tawadu. This is the case with all people. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those whom are able to understand this and apply it, inshaAllah. The arrogant person commits the most absurd thing. They would rather accept compliments from themselves instead of accepting them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why compliment yourself? when you can receive that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not trade, what a silly trade that is. Let Allah say it to you. Don't ever say it to yourself. 
And Allah will say it to you by means of people, by means of circumstance, by means of praise. Let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be the one and do not let arrogance ever seep into your heart which is occupied only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّكَ لَن تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضَ وَلَن تَبْلُغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولًا Indeed, no matter what, we will never be able to break the strength of the ground nor beat the mountain in, in height. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this concept of humbleness and to make us humble with our children, humble with our parents, humble with our siblings and our relatives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our dua. إِنِّي دَاعٍ فَأَمِّنُوا اللَّهُمَّ هَدِينَا فِي مَنْ هَدَيْتْ وَعَافِنَا فِي مَنْ عَافَيْتْ وَتَوَلَّنَا فِي مَنْ تَوَلَّيْتْ وَبَارِكِ اللَّهُمَّ لَنَا فِي مَا أَعْطَيْتْ اللَّهُمَّ أَصْرِفْ عَنَّا شَرَّ مَا قَضَيْتْ فَإِنَّكَ تَقْضِي بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يُقْضَى عَلَيْكْ وَأَنَّهُ لَا يَذِلُّ مَنْ وَالَيْتْ وَأَنَّهُ لَا يَعِزُّ مَنْ عَادَيْتْ تَبَارَكْتَ رَبَّنَا وَتَعَالَيْتْ اللَّهُمَّ اجْعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُحَافِظِينَ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ اللَّهُمَّ اجْعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ لِقِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ اللَّهُمَّ اسْتُرْنَا فَوْقَ الْأَرْضِ وَتَحْتَ الْأَرْضِ وَيَوْمَ الْعَرْضِ عَلَيْكَ آمِينَ آمِينَ يَا رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَأ